in the in the midst of a, of an incredible conversation, I, I think it's incredible, and every and by virtue of the fact that I'm learning something with uh, with uh, every response uh, to the questions, and uh, and I'm delighted that uh, that I I like to think that I'm on uh, on a pretty good path here. Don't smoke anymore. Uh, get a reasonable amount of exercise. Uh, pop a fish pill. And six milligrams is uh, is about right for you. So, uh, I take six grams. So oh, six great. grams. So uh, most capsules come about a gram of fish oils. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and the only issue is uh, how contaminated are they potentially with mercury, or how pure they are, or whether you need to stick them in the freezer to see if they congeal, or you know, the, see the quality of it. There's a whole. Oh, I need to be reading some of the stuff that you're reading because I just yeah. I buy it from the from the the vitamin store and then stick it in the in the cupboard like everybody else does. Right. Nine thirty seven on the breakfast show and uh, and again four seven seven five seven five seven. If you've got uh, questions, uh, 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 you know, you want to talk to a doctor who specifies uh, specifics in the, in diabetes. I got one in the studio. Eileen's on. Good morning, Eileen. Oh, good morning. Hi, hi, doctor. I would just hi. like to uh, t- tell you about my mom. She was diabetic for over 30 years. She died at the age of 90. She never had any neuropathy. She, her eyes were perfect except for uh, using reading glasses. Um, and one, one thing for her, though, was that she was never overweight, but it was hereditary. Mm-hmm. And in my family, we have to be very careful about it. But I think, and oh, I wanted to say, a, a, di- a person who, is on di- who has diabetes and follows the diabetic diet is a diet that's good for anybody. Mm-hmm. No, I think you know, I think you're correct? right. Absolutely yeah, right. And so, I'm overweight. So if I had just followed my mom's diet, I think I would be at a, at a good weight now. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was one of the reasons why diabetes is so high on Guam is because many people on island do not get, a, I think, do not get a, week, a yearly physical. Mm-hmm. And so, if you don't get that usually yearly physical with the, the blood work, then people go for here on Guam. Normally, it's, they go. Uh, for the diabetes check after they've already had some damage, severe damage. Right. Um, that's been my experience. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I had a friend who who had health insurance and did not go for the yearly thing, and he got lost a lot of weight. He went, he uh, got the diabetes medicine, and then he was okay. So I think we need to encourage more people on island to get that yearly physical, to, to get their lab work. Mm-hmm. And I know that sometimes, you know, public health, I think, has... Um, those outreaches where they do the free blood test. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's another thing that would really help. But I really think that we need to have more outreach about diabetes, about getting that yearly physical, getting your lab work, um, because diabetes is one of those diseases that people don't, it, like what Ray said, it doesn't, you don't feel it right. until you've had some kind of uh, damage. Right. No, you're absolutely right, Eileen. I think uh, uh, we were just talking about this. Um, if we could, uh, if we could get a database together of uh, of folks who um, everyone knows, uh, whether it's ourselves or whether it's family members mm-hmm. or friends, um, if we could get that database together and I'd be able to identify uh, everyone who either has diabetes or is at risk for diabetes by virtue of weight or by virtue of um, their their past medical history. Um, mm-hmm. Then um, what we could do, we could then do is um, uh, have uh, community outreach and get these folks in t- into um, in- into appropriate clinics, treatment areas, so they could be g- given guidance. Um, I, uh, I know that uh, folks at Guam uh, Regional Medical City are very interested in potentially uh, uh, getting out into the community and um, trying to um, provide pro bono um, the necessary um, factors that would not only identify uh, individuals, but get them into the right kinds of treatment programs, whether it's weight loss, smoking reduction, more exercise, stress reduction, and right. if they need it. Uh, um, and I think you're absolutely right. We, we need to have more community outreach where... Um, we we perform um, testing. We do hemoglobin A1Cs to see mm-hmm. levels of uh, of control. How much uh, individuals are sh- sugarizing their blood vessels? Mm-hmm. How much you know? Glucose is sticky stuff, and it's the stickiness mm-hmm. that, that blocks the small blood vessels. And the test hemoglobin A1C really tells us what's going on in the body. Right. And if we could uh, if we could really um, uh, you know get hemoglobin A1Cs on everybody uh, on a yearly basis. And get folks into uh, appropriate care centers um, when their when their blood sugars were 150 or the hemoglobin A1Cs were six, then we could prevent the the dialysis mm. 
and prevent the, uh, oh, yes. the blindness. And so many, yes, yeah. it's really sad on Guam that this is happening. Right. But I, I think that's really great that you're going to do this, that you want to do this diabetes, di- di- diabetes outreach and get people registered. That's really because so many people on Guam have it in their families. Sure. Yeah, yeah well, and, uh, and, and, may, and sometimes maybe you, you don't even know, it. so-and-so, and yeah, and, and he was heavy or she was heavy, and uh, and then he had uh, lost his vision or so-and-so lost uh, lost right. a leg or something like that, and, and oh, it was bad, and we said the novenas and everything, but didn't really uh, yeah. get into the into the root cause of it, and I'm glad that, that this doctor is identifying some of those root causes. There's, in your case, mm-hmm. the genetic predisposition to it, yes. uh, but then you've also, you've got you know, diet and exercise issues, and, and I'm going to understand underscore this because he took points to underscore it in that last paragraph that he he, uh, he, he was talking about is get your stress under control get your yes. stress under control and uh, and that will take a couple of bites out of your numbers mm-hmm. well I would just like to with my mom she was the first one in her family that had diabetes because you know her her parents they died very young and they're in the 60s so but when my mom got it she was ashamed she really was like she did because she thought she did something wrong Mm-mm. And she didn't tell us for a long time that she was diabetic. Then finally she told us, but it wasn't anything she did. It was just, it, I think that's important for people to understand. Mm-hmm. It's not your fault. Mm-hmm. You have this genetic predisposition. And you can live to 90. And you can that's live right. to 90. She did. <laughs> she died two years ago. And if you saw her, she was like, she could have been the poster child for diabetes. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's not, a, it, I, I think people have to understand it's not a bad thing. You can control it. Right. You know, you could control it. You watch your diet. She always took her, you know, um, what do you call her, blood uh, sugar. Right. And if she overdid it the night before, it was a little high, then she cut back on the rice or whatever. Mm-hmm. But we, she didn't suffer. I mean, she, it wasn't a sacrifice for her to follow the diet. Well, there's another point that, uh, that that I think is is important to underscore, and that it you know it, this is an important thing, and uh, and you do have to kind of become a student, and learn how to take care of yourself. Uh, but uh, it, it, no worse than having to balance a checkbook, uh, or right. or you know drive the kids to school every day. All right. of the things. It's just another thing in your life that uh, that you've right. got to do, and that yeah, you can right. control it. It's not difficult. It's it's, it's not all denial and sacrifice. Yeah. Right. That's true. But I think that's something that people have to understand because I think that's there's so much out about diabetes that maybe not be true. You know what I mean? It's like the diff- we find out about all the, uh, the horrors of it. Sure. But what is the truth about living every day, your daily life, if you have diabe- diabetes? Mm-hmm. You know? Hey, maybe that's another thing we should do. We should, we should feature people who, who have diabetes and are living a good life. You know what I mean? Not, because we all hear about the, what do you call that, the dialysis yeah. and amputation. Sure. Oh, but by the way, doctor, I write an article in the uh, Guam Daily Post. Eileen, Eileen, we're going to give you an hour here on the show. I, <laughs> she's great. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm just going to leave. I'll talk to you later. Well, hey, Ray, you want me to be a guest host? <laughs> well, yeah. When, uh, if we start talking about if we, because if, if, uh, I think the doc's got a great idea. And and again, uh, this is this is important here. I am I am 53 years old, and and I have been to funerals for friends and classmates yes, because yes, because yes. guys more and more guys in my age group and they, they got a heart issue or they got diabetes. Yes. And, and it's it's killing them. And and if there's anything that I can use this radio station for to get right. the word out that it's not a death sentence. Our diet, our well, exercise is not necessarily gonna, a death sentence, then let's do it. Well, I'm going to write about diabetes in my article next week. Perfect. Great. Yes. Well, well I love Thank what you've been writing about this week. <laughs> oh, oh, you got to read it today, Ray. It's the Guam amazing. Recorder stuff, yeah. Well, you know what, also, too, and I don't know if I should say this, but, you know, there, there was, uh, oh, did you read the, the Sunday Post? You I, the Sunday uh, Post? I, was, I have it, but I haven't read it yet. It was all about death rituals, and there was this, I, I emailed this, this professor at UOG wrote, wrote um, a research paper about death rituals while going on with had falsehoods. They weren't true. Hmm. Oh, oh! Somebody, uh, I, I read. I it, emailed yes, you. Yes, you're the one that emailed me on that I one. Did. I did. Yeah, I'm but I figured you got your own uh, editorial uh, editorial vehicle. You could take <laughs> care anyway. of that in your own deal. <laughs> yes, uh, that's what I wrote about. So do read it. Oh, thank you so much, Doctor, for your work with diabetes. Uh, thank you, Eileen. All righty. Uh, I'll talk to you pretty soon. Uh, she's okay, thanks, I'm, I'm showing. Uh, I'm showing him your article in this morning's post here. Uh, she writes in that, and uh, and she's she's done something uh, that uh, that I did a few years ago, and uh, and that my mom did a few years ago, uh, and. If you have not yet 
had the chance to do it, go to the library or see if you can find, I think Mark's got a series, uh, a number of them online, uh, read up on the old Guam recorders. And uh, and if you read up a, a, a magazine that was out in the 20s and 30s here on Guam, uh, and it's a delightful look back on history. But they also did a few things in the, in there that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, is is that they kept track of what killed people, and you, you see words in it. We don't use them any. Uh, consumption uh, was a big cause of people dying uh, anymore. Uh, and and I, I think a good doctor like the one in front of me here would be able to look at it and go. Yeah, uh, this, 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 and this, and the, even in the 20s and 30s, one of the big reasons why people were dying uh, was uh, sanitary issues, to be sure. Uh, but maybe that was what we call today diabetes. Mm -hmm. No, no reason why it uh, mm -hmm. why it shouldn't be. All right, so we were talking about putting this database together, and and you want to do this, and we'll do a hemoglobin test and the A1C and all of these things. Yeah. Um, and a, it costs money, and uh, uh, I think b, it costs money. Uh, right. to, to do all of these tests on, on anything more than, you know, just a patient-doctor basis. Mm -hmm. uh, are there groups out there that, that you line up with as a doctor that said, well, we got plenty of these tests, mm -hmm. and we'll give you enough to you could take over the, the parking lot at a mall all day and, and see 200 people? Yeah. Uh, well, I know that uh, at, at Guam Regional Medical City, we just gave the, um, the local diabetes society a... Um, a machine to measure hemoglobin A1Cs. So th th we we've donated that as a part of uh, the the health outreach that um, we feel is minimum that we can do. Um, but um, you know you, you you touch a very important nerve here, um, and um, in reality. Uh, it is a major problem. It's, mm -hmm. it's not only a problem here; it's a problem in, in the states as well because uh, we have all, a whole variety of new wonderful medications. The medication I talked about before that increases dopamine activity in the brain is incredibly expensive, and no one wants to pay for it. Insurance companies do not want to pay for that uh, unless you have a you know a high tier and are willing to yeah. um, to uh, come out of your own pocket. And so uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, unless you've got the um, the financial means, it's very difficult for you to get access to some of the latest and greatest advances that we have. Um, but I think from a, from a public health perspective, it really is so, I mean, there, diabetes is such a major illness on this island that it would be uh, well worth it for um, the uh, folks in, the, in, in Gov Guam to, um, to come together and try to allocate a significant portion of the budget to try to find this. Uh, uh, we can do fundraisers uh, mm -hmm. in the, the local diabetes groups. The consortiums do fundraisers as well. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, what I found when coming here is I used to have access to samples when I was in the States. Mm -hmm. Drug companies would load me with samples so I could give patients access try to drugs. Try that. Yeah, but here I can't find a single drug rep. I mean, everybody's yelling at the drug companies because they're spending too much money. But this is one of the things they do that's just wonderful. Uh, they, you know, they, they not only come in and help you learn about the drugs, but they give you or samples. They give you all sorts of brochures and wonderful ancillary um, pieces uh, of information. And we don't have access to that here. I mean, when I call the state um, mm -hmm. uh, drug companies, they say this is... Uh, we don't get credit for it here in the states. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, maybe uh, and uh, it's completely uh, may not work. But I'll tell you how we used to do it in the in the radio business. And uh, if you worked at a radio station in the states, uh, you would have a record rep coming to see you all the time. Here's the new songs, and this is what we're working. Here's an album, and here's some free merchandise to give away on the radio. It doesn't work out here. So mm -hmm. what has been done in the past is a pool. And somebody will put together a pool and uh, and represent a number of companies mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and their samples and uh, and be able to supply us with CDs and things like that back in the day. Uh, they're not around anymore, so I don't know if there's anything about that business uh, mm -hmm. or or the tyranny of distance that we've got here on Guam that uh, that would prevent something like that from uh, from happening. But I. There, there, there's got to be more of the conversation. I think when, when, if we could look at what they are spending at Guam Memorial Hospital, the Department of Corrections, among other places, uh, and and what the insurance companies are paying for therapies and treatment for their clients that have diabetes of one kind or another, uh, and uh, and different problems that come from diabetes, and we're going to come up with this big, huge number. 
And the number for medicine and test kits and renting the parking lot at the mall is going to be a, a much tinier number. So, Amen. so in in terms of an investment, uh, maybe maybe we need to find out what that big overall number is and say so we can knock this off by ten percent. It will save us this, right. and that's still going to be a fraction of uh, of the number that we're going to spend for the uh, for the surveillance and uh, and the intervention. Nine fifty one on the breakfast show. Hey Marie, good morning. You're on with uh, with Doctor Innerfield. Hi, Dr. Innisfield, and good morning, Ray. Um, My name's Marie. I'm with Pacific Retina Specialist, and so, uh, as you can imagine, this conversation is very intriguing to me, and Mm -hmm. I commend your efforts to improve the health of our diabetic patients here in Guam. We're an eye practice, so we, the majority, I would say more than 80% of our patients are either diabetic or we're dealing with severe diabetic retinopathy. Sure. And, um... You know, we run into some a lot of the same issues, education, even what you're talking about with the samples. Um, Dr. Parks, who's our primary physician, is from Los Angeles, and he came out to Guam. Same issue. Mm-hmm. You know, he's used to getting samples and copay assistance for high-cost uh, um, diabetic medications. And we have also been struggling very much with the drug companies as far as recognizing Guam as part of the United States and Seeing our island residents as um, United, uh, you know, United States citizens, mm-hmm. and getting the same things uh, that they can get in the states is very frustrating. But I know what Dr. Parks has done as when he sees his reps stateside, is remind them constantly that we are out here and mm-hmm. doing everything we can to try to get samples, um, copay assistance, all of those things for our patients here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the more the doctors get involved in it and insist that our drug reps, you know, help our patients out here who are American citizens, the better off we're going to be. No, I I, I certainly second that. Um, You know, it's interesting that um, Ron Klein, who's uh, an ophthalmologist, retinal specialist, also epidemiologist, did a study called the Wisconsin Study of um, Diabetic Retinopathy. And uh-huh. the patients who had the, the worst diabetic retinopathy um, had the highest risk of death. They were, they were at very oh. high risk of dying. And that's been correlated in several other studies that uh, no matter how we look at it, the higher, your, the higher your risks of death. One of the things that I didn't mention here that's also a major player uh, here in Guam is blood pressure which contributes both to the retinopathy and mm-hmm. renal disease. Mm-hmm. And uh, the salt metabolism and high levels of salt that are consumed. And um, critically, uh, it's almost as important, if not, uh, it's certainly equally as important um, to the blood sugar to try to reduce some of these complications. So the blood, blood pressure, and it's not only the blood sugar, but the blood pressure as well that needs to be uh, addressed and kept Monitored, under, right. under tight control. But um, well, I think why, why'd you have to go there? I was doing all right. I was, I was starting to, already there. I, I, was, I was looking at my watch, uh, Marie, and it's like 9.54, and, and we haven't criminalized salt all the way through the conversation, and bam, there it is. You tried to. <laughs> well, that's why in our practice, you know, we're a retina practice. And mm. So what we say is, you know, uh, we're looking into the back of the eye. And if we're looking at blood vessels that, you know, are are ischemic, they're lacking blood flow, they're bleeding, we got to know that that's also happening in the rest of the body. It's so not yeah. isolated to the eye. So okay. it's such a big signal. And that's why now as an ophthalmology practice, we're also very uh, closely monitoring our own patients blood sugars, blood pressure, we ask them what their A1C is because, you know, you can go into your doctor's office and your blood sugar is normal, but, you know, two weeks ago, you know, you behaved for two weeks before you showed up in our office, your A1C is going to tattletale on you, and then we can um, know. But I think that, at least for me, my comment would be, how can we help the primary physicians get these diabetic patients to an eye doctor sooner? By the time we get them as a retina practice, um, a lot of them are so severe. Marie, can I can I go that. to you just for uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 my insurance company pays for an eye exam every year. Can I go to you as part of that? 
Absolutely. Okay, good. Because and, and that that would lead to some of that early detection that we're talking about because it might be uh, notwithstanding anything else happening in the body, it might be something that you see as you probe yes. into the back of the eye when I have to look at that little picture of the house and and you say, <laughs> "Okay," and then you can actually see what's going on back yes. there. That might be for some patients the first sign that there's an issue. Exactly. And and there um, a lot of them too are uh, I think what troubles us is sometimes we get patients that have severe diabetic neuropathy or early signs of it, and I will ask them, did your primary care doctor tell you to get an eye, annual eye exam? And they say, we've never seen an eye doctor. This is the first time we've had an eye exam. And I don't, you know, that's not all on the physician. I'm sure they're telling them, I, they're, you know, it's in the media, it's in all the pamphlets, mm-hmm. uh, and it just might just be one of those things that are kind of brushed to the side because they're so concerned that, you know, your blood sugar is 400. That kind of takes a priority, but... Um, you know, we, it's got to be comprehensive. That's why I think checking the blood sugar and the A1C, doing these outreach, you know, it needs to be comprehensive. Wellness, eye exams, and um, regular, consistent follow-ups with the physician. So well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm due for an eye exam. I haven't had anybody look at my eyes since Dr. Con, uh, Dr. Arroyo did it, did the LASIK about five years ago. So I, maybe I'm going to call you. What, what's the number at your place, Marie? Our office number is 649-EYES. Mm-hmm. So that's six four nine three nine three seven. Gotcha. And and we're so thankful for all the physicians uh, that do refer patients to us and to other ophthalmologists on this island, so that we can just be a part of the whole comprehensive care system. Nine fifty seven in the morning. I'm going to leave it right there, Marie. Thanks very much for the time. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. The breakfast show on News Talk K fifty seven. And and there there uh, another as I said another way that we might be able to look at it uh, at at our world. And maybe you're not going to go see a doctor because you think you have diabetes. You got some weird complication. Uh, but get your eye exempt, and uh, and they might be able to see some things in the background that uh, that might lead you to an appointment with Dr. Interfield. How do we get an appointment with you? Um, you beg, borrow, and no, no. <laughs> <laughs> first born, all of that. <laughs> right. um, no, uh, actually, it's my schedule is pretty light right now. So um, yeah, it's just uh, just calling up the uh, Guam Regional Medical City, asking for the specialty, mm-hmm. the care clinic, um, and um, asking for an appointment. Okay. Do I need to get referred to you by anybody else? Uh, if I go uh, see my, my regular uh, G, you know, uh, MD? Not if, you ha- not if you have diabetes or known thi- a known endocrine problem, no. If there's some other issue, then you might need a referral, but um, yeah, for diabetes, certainly not. You call your insurance company if you've got questions. There are some insurance companies that are working and playing well with it, which GRMC. There's some uh, that uh, that have yet to strike uh, strike some agreements. So uh, so make sure that you you know what your situation is going to be uh, payment wise as you roll in there. Doc, thanks very much for the time. Thank you, Ray. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm, I I hope you did. I appreciate it. right up to the conversation <laughs> about salt and don't <laughs> stop right there.